The only thing I ever wanted in life was to be a mother. <laughs> and like a lot of people, it was harder than we thought it would be. With a lot of prayer, two years of IVF, we finally received the news that we were having not one, but two precious little babies. And it was the happiest moment of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going, Mark? We're going to the hospital. I went into labor early and we were so nervous. And the moment I heard Maxwell's cry changed me as a person. The day we received Maxwell's diagnosis, I went back to work. I told them all something really bad has happened and I have to leave right now. And I didn't even grab my earbuds. I just walked out and I didn't know what I was gonna do or how I was going to do it, but I knew I was going to do it. <laughs> I knew I was going to help Maxwell and every other child with this disease. Maxwell was diagnosed with a rare disease that was so rare it didn't even have a name. It's known as SLC6A1, which is the genetic location. At the time of the diagnosis, we were told he was one of 50 in the world and that nothing could ever be done. And just go home and give him the best life you can. Between the ages of three and four, these kids develop a debilitating form of epilepsy. And then they regress because there aren't any drugs that can treat the epilepsy well. So his neurological system will essentially be on fire with no way to help him. I will fight and advocate for him to the death. And if something can be done, I'm going to do it. So I just looked right back at the doctors and I said, if this were your son today, what would you do? And they said, start calling scientists. Every scientist said, have you thought about gene replacement therapy? It looks like this disease can actually not only be treated, but cured. There was one scientist in Texas that we identified as our man. He's extremely busy, nearly impossible to get his attention. So I started sending him Uber snacks and snapshots of Maxwell. I found out he was speaking at the National Institute of Health at a conference. I took a red eye and I just showed up. And there he was sitting in the front row and I walked right up to the front row and I just sat down next to him and was trying to play it cool and he turned to me and he said, hi Amber. <laughs> and I said, hi Steve, can we go out to dinner tonight? And after a four hour dinner, we had a plan and we were gonna cure this disease together. The cure is actually created now. We're going to come close to 500,000 within the next couple of weeks. We've raised all of that money through $20 donations on GoFundMe. Gene therapy is being done in thousands of diseases like Maxwell's. So we know it's going to work. We need to raise the money and complete the science for his particular gene. The more money we raise, the faster we can go. We can do some steps in parallel that we're doing chronologically right now. The treatment itself is extremely simplistic. You receive a two hour spinal tap where the new gene is introduced into the body through a virus that doesn't make humans sick. The virus goes up through your spinal fluid to your brain and it's a smart virus. So it attacks the bad copies of the DNA and stacks good working copies of the DNA on top. And viruses permanently alter your DNA. So it's a two hour treatment that's once and done for the rest of your life.
Someday, this disease will be on a newborn screening panel, so children will be diagnosed while they are still in the hospital, and parents will receive the devastating news that their child has a rare neurological disease, but they'll be treated before they leave the hospital and they will never become symptomatic. There will never be another Maxwell Freed. I'm coming before you today as a humble mother asking for your help to help save Maxwell from his rare disease. I really don't have the words of gratitude for you other than to say thank you so much for helping my baby.